can get really tricky to deal with configuration within your project, particularly if your project starts to grow and you end up with more and more configuration options and you just don't know what to do with them. So in this video, we're going to look at building a configuration class, which allows us to read configuration from a nicely formatted file. In this case, it's returning an array of different uh, configuration options for our project. And we're going to look at a really easy way that we can access these. So before we get started, we'll actually look at how this works. So I have a file here called config.php. This is a class and we're going to load this in and we're going to look at how we can actually grab one of these options nested in this multidimensional array. And we can work with as many nests as we want here. So it's entirely flexible. So we'll start just by requiring in app config.php. This class is namespaced under project helpers. Uh, you don't have to namespace this, so you can skip that part if you aren't using namespacing in your application. Uh, but let's go ahead and just have a look at this uh, and how it works. So I'm going to create a new project helpers config. Obviously, if you weren't using namespaces, you would just say new config. And we can obviously go ahead and import this at the top if we want to. So we can create our use statement just there. So the next thing we want to do is load in the configuration file that we want to use. In this case, all we do is we have a method called load, which we can choose a file. So in this case, it's config.php. So it's config with a uh, lowercase c. That's this file here that we were looking at a minute ago. So now that we've done that, how do we access our configuration options? Everything should be loaded in fine. If we go ahead and refresh, nothing seems to happen because we're not outputting anything. All we need to do is say config and then use this get method and then choose separated by a dot uh, which option we want to grab. So in this case, I'm going to say DB host and we'll see if we get this output. So we say DB dot host. All dot means is you're going one level into this array. So now what we can do is refresh and we see that we get that value and we can do that with any of the other values in here, obviously included further nested items as well. So that's how easy it is to use this configuration helper. Let's go ahead and build this so you can use it in your projects today. So before you get started, you are going to want to make sure you have some kind of configuration you can test with. Now, in this case, I'm just returning this array within this PHP file. This is the only type of configuration we're going to look at loading in. You can obviously extend the class later on if you want to deal with different formats, JSON, XML, if you need to. But in this case, I've got a DB key. This just holds some database credentials and mail, which holds some mail credentials for sending email or whatever you want to do. So now we're going to start building our config class. So I have an app directory here. I'm going to just create a new file in here and I'm going to go ahead and call this config.php. So let's create our PHP tag and I'm going to namespace this. You don't have to, but I'm going to namespace this under project helpers and we define the class like so, so class config. So what we can now do is load this into this index.php file. We can instantiate it. And then as we add the methods to load in our configuration and get different keys, we can test that out as we go. So we want to require in app config.php, and then we want to create a config variable that's gonna hold a new project helpers config obviously if you're not namespacing this you just say new config and i'm actually going to get, go ahead and import this at the top of the file just to keep things a little bit tidier so like so so now that we've done that go ahead and refresh the page we shouldn't see any errors we can go ahead and start building the rest of this uh, this class so the first thing we want to deal with is loading in a configuration file which is this file here so let's create a method to do that so we're going to call this load and this is going to take the name of the file so inside of here, then we're going to uh, say file and we're going to assign requiring in that file to that file variable. So if we do a var dump on file and inside of index.php, we say config load config.php. That's obviously going to take this config here, require it in, and then we'll just do a var dump on it and we can see what we get. So you see here we've got an array of two items, DB and mail, and then inside of here we have an array of more items. So that's our uh, configuration. And we need to put this somewhere so we can go ahead and 
either just keep this local variable here and then say this data equals file. You might want to do something in the middle uh, depending on how you're loading in files. Uh, so in this case, what we can actually do is get rid of that, pop that in there like so. So this data is obviously a property at the top of our class. So I'm going to say protected, protected data and uh, that's gone ahead and loaded that in. We can use that within other methods now. And if you're having any problems with this, you can just change the visibility of this property and you can go ahead and do a var dump on config data. And when you refresh, you'll see that array. So let's get rid of that. Let's change this back to protected because we don't really need it to be visible outside of the class. And we can go ahead and look at actually getting the options now, which is really important. So we have this method called get. And this is going to take in a key and a default value we're going to assign within here if that can't be found. And this is really useful because we want to say uh, eventually config get and we want to say something like db.host. What we can do is pass in here a second option uh, of what's returned if that can't be found. And that's really important because you might need to change this at some point. So in my case, I can just say an empty string or I could say null, which is the default anyway. So inside of here, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign default to a property within this class. So we can say protected default. That's just in case we need to uh, use this anywhere else, which we will be doing in another method in just a moment. And now what we want to do is start to break up our data that we've stored up here so we can actually access it by this dot notation. So remember we're saying db.host. So what we want to do is break this up into segments. And we do this by exploding that data value by a dot. Uh, sorry, that key value by a dot. So that's going to give us, if we just do a var dump on segments, the following. So we've got db and host. So we now know that we need to look inside of db and then find the value for host. So now what we need to do is we're going to pull in the data from our property at the top and we're going to assign that to a local variable. So we can say this data. So data here now obviously has uh, whichever value, uh, whichever array has been stored in data. And then we want to loop through each of the segments. So we create a for each loop here and we're going to say for each segments as segment. So for the first loop, this will be DB. For the second loop, it will be host. Inside of here, we need to check if, it, if it's set inside of our data, which we've stored here. So is DB set and then is host set. So we're doing this sort of uh, in a loop and we're looping through. So we're going to say is set data. Uh, this isn't a string, this is segment. So this will be is set data db on the first run. Now if it is set, we're going to set data or we're going to assign the value uh, to data that segment. So what this will do then is if db is set, it will set this data uh, variable here to this array. Then in the second loop, when we look for host in the second loop, because this array is now data, it will look for host and then it will find the value. So if you're not too sure about this, have a little play around and maybe do some var dumps under here just to see what, what you're getting out. Now, if that configuration option isn't found, so for example, if we said db uh, dot encoding, we wouldn't be able to find it here. It doesn't exist in here. So we could say else. And then what we want to do is set data to the return, the default return value, which remember is here, but we've also stored in this data. So we're going to say data equals this default. And if that's not found, we don't want to loop for the rest of the segments. So we want to go ahead and we want to break that loop. So after the loop, we can go ahead and return the newly built up data. So let's just run over this once more very, very quickly, just if it's a little bit confusing. So the first loop of this, in my case, where I'm saying db.host, the first loop segment is going to be db. So it's going to check if data 
db is set, which it is. So it's going to assign data the result of data segment, which will end up setting it to this array here. In the second loop, it's then going to say is data host set, because remember segment is in the second loop. And then it's going to set data to data segment, which is data host. Because this is a string value, it means that all we're doing is setting data to 127.0.0.1 and then following on, we just return that data and that's it. So let's just check uh, how this looks. So I'm going to go ahead and echo this out. I'm going to go ahead and refresh and you can see that we get that value. It really is as easy as that. We can go ahead and test this out with more uh, loops. So I'm going to say host and then I'm going to inside of a new array, say primary. And let's just say one. And we'll have maybe secondary. And we'll just set that to two. We can now say db.hosts.primary. We're looping three times now. And we get the result we expect. And we can do the same for secondary, like so. And we can obviously do the same for the male part of this as my, well, male and host. Now, if it can't be found, so for example, db.host now doesn't exist. We have this hosts key instead. Uh, we'll see if we refresh, we get nothing. Uh, we're actually getting a, a null returned on this. So if we do a var dump, we can see that uh, clearly, like so, null. And we can obviously change the default return value. So if I wanted it to be an empty string, I could be like that string length of zero. So there we go. So you've got full uh, flexibility over pulling in your options and then defining a default return value as well. We could just stop here, but we're going to implement a final method, uh, which is going to allow us to check if a key actually exists. There's not many situations where you want to do that, but it's good just to have it in place anyway. So what we want to do then is down here, define a exists method. And inside of here, we want to be able to pass in a key to check whether it exists. And this is the reason we set default to a property at the top here. What we can actually do is set this to a default as well, which will obviously be overridden uh, when we go ahead and get any value if we change that or keep it at null. So this will stay at null if we don't, and it'll change if we do. And in here, we can just go ahead and use the get um, method inside of this class to check if it exists. So all we want to do is return this get passing in that key and we want to check that it doesn't equal the default value that we've set. So if, for example, we set the default of null or we'll just leave it as it is and we say go ahead and check that db.host exists, it doesn't. So therefore it's going to equal null because that's our default value. We get a false value returned. And if we do something like db.host.primary, we go ahead and get true. We know that exists. So we have built ourselves a configuration class that we can easily use in our project to pull in configuration options that look like this. And uh, I hope you'll agree it looks a lot tidier.